Hello, it's Beach Cams Man and Jack from Brown. We're here for another tour of the Brooks section of the Seawall. Jack, there's loads been going on since the last tour, so um, what's happening here? Right, so as you can see, there's plenty of work been uh, undertaken since our last visit. I think our last visit was around, probably around about three weeks ago when you came to look at the closed culvert we were installing. That's right, yeah. Um, so since then, uh, we've progressed very well with the open culvert, which I'll get onto and show you in a minute. Um, we cast the south pier of the link bridge, the first pour of that, which you can see there, yeah. uh, with a steel reinforcement projecting up through. That will then support the rest of the kind of abutment which carries up, or the pier which carries on up then, to support span A. Span yeah. A will be pretty much directly above where we've stood now. Okay. And then span B and C, and that goes between there. the two. Yeah. So behind us, you can see the guys working on the south abutment. So this is a peri or formwork system. Um, and all it is is used to form the shape of the concrete um, during the curing process. So we, tomorrow we're planning on pouring in there. Um, it's around about a 24, 25 metre cube pour. Uh, we'll pump it in from our underpass, which we've been using to complete the rest of the works, put the hose over the top and then pour it to a set level. Um, we don't pour all the way to the top, and the reason why the reinforcement is projected above is because that's what joins into the link bridge span as the ah, span okay. joins into it then. So when we put the full work up and erect um, all, all the formwork on top of that to support span A, that will then tie into the steelwork there, and when we cast the deck, that will be cast in the deck. Okay. Um, so the south abutment is the first of the, the kind of link bridge pours to be done. Um, once the south abutment has been done, you can see then the gap which will fill in between the two. Um, so I think the last time we were here, we were building the pile cap, the reinforced beam. That's right. Uh, where, where that anchor and that strut's currently yeah. tied into. Um, once this formwork stripped out of here, the guys will then carry on putting the blocks in there and then start getting this up to level. Um, we've pretty much got most of the precast units to complete the remainder of the job now. Uh, up in our uh, auxiliary compound on Timbeth Road. Okay. So everything's ready to go. As soon as the, the formwork stripped out on Monday, we'll then start putting the blocks in next week and backfill into the rear. Once we backfill to the rear, um, we, we concrete up to the same height as the block you can see in the distance over there. Yeah. And then we start putting the recurves and L units on from the rest of the, the, where we left off at Marine Parade. Right, okay, yeah. The reason why we left nine or ten units in that section is because there's a gradual transition into the link bridge. Okay. And at the time, the link bridge hadn't been designed fully. So what we did is we left the units off there to give us scope as we came into the next package of works. Okay. It was obviously done under two separate contracts. Yeah. Well, three separate contracts, really, as we speak. Okay. Um, so. Today, the guys are undertaking some concrete pours on the edge of the stilling basin. We've started putting in the perimeter wall, so you can go and have a look over it now if you like. Wow. And then we'll go into the stilling basin and have a look at the closed pool there. So, the perimeter walls, um, there's about seven or eight units on this, on this side over here, and we've got about 13 units on the side over there, uh, where you can see the 70 ton sack over in the distance. Yeah. So, the perimeter wall units have what's called a um, they have a form liner on the inside face, similar to a form liner what we use to do the precast for the basin panels and cast the arches in, in front of the station. Yeah. But this one's called a Hawaii form liner. Um, it's a rectory product. It gets passed onto the um, into the mould when we do the well, gets put into the mould when we're doing the precasting process, and obviously you're left with the imprint. So for probably about a month, a month or month and a half period now, we're going to leave a gap on this side over here. Yeah. That's to allow plants and machinery to move in and out. Okay. Um, there's no real reason why we're not, other than that, other than why we're not putting in the unit. Right, so, so that wall is going to join the breakwater then? The yeah, it's tied, okay. tied, tied right to the breakwater with it over the other side. And then from where we're stood now, this will be finished off in granite steps, similar to the viewing platform areas throughout the rest of the job. Right. So final level is probably about 300 mil up from where we're stood now. Okay. Roughly, yeah. So yeah. There's, not, there's not a great deal more to go on to here. As you, as you come through this section then, in the corner, you have some stairs to access up onto the top of the breakwater and go onto Marine Parade. And then you'll also have a DDA compliant ramp to allow you to join from Marine Parade down into the underpass and then up over the bridge. Okay. So we'll just jump up on the top of the bridge. So as you come up onto the bridge now, um, this is what we were recording the last time we were put in. That's right. So there's, there was four beams on the left-hand side here, which you can see. Yeah. And then this section here was an in-situ pour. So we put some formwork up put the reinforcement cage in and cast the edge beam to the rest of the beams that you can see on the left hand side here. So, so this section on the right here where the total station sat was all, was all done within situ yeah. concrete. As you look over the edge then, you've got the still in basin and the open for well, the spillway. Um, down each side, it's about 13 units, I think there is, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 
12, 13, yeah. So there's a gap where Harry's um, currently walking through at the moment and a gap on the other side. Those are bespoke units. Um, and what I didn't want to do, because we've been installing free casts from loads of different directions, I didn't want to leave us with any play. Yeah. So the, the idea was those units were always left to be cast after everything else was installed, so they could basically suit and fit the gap. Just because you do end up with design tolerances and construction tolerances, and sometimes you do end up creeping along the distance along the line. Okay. It, on the floor then, um, most of the holes which we've used to kind of grout the slabs together. So in this area, there is 15 slabs. Yeah. The front, the front three slabs have uh, 16 dowel bars in each, which hold the slab down. The reason why the front three have so many is because that's, that's where you get the most impact, impact from the yeah. sea. And then everything behind it has four 1.2 meter dowels which hold them in place. Okay. All of the lifting eyes and the dowel holes have been filled in. And then the only holes which, which you can see now are the odd shapes that have been pre-cast into, uh, into the units over in Ireland. And they're to act as rock pools, so to promote marine growth oh, in, okay. in this sort of environment. Oh wow, okay. The, the centre of the spillway is angled, so that it, when, when it's low tide it diverts the water into the middle of the stream. Um, and on, on some of the, the very high spring tides, you know, this is going to be pretty much filled right the way up. Yeah. Uh, you know yourself the, 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 the difference in the tidal range that you do get and you do experience down here. So on either side of the Stillen Basin, you've got some stairs to go down into it for maintenance and for access. Uh, there'll be some hand railing put along the side. And, and all along this edge beam that you can see in front of us here, there'll be another set of stainless steel hand railing that runs right the way yeah. down, similar to what we've put on across the rest of the wall. So the guys on the right hand side now are putting the structural slabs on the back of the step units and what that does is basically link all of the step units together at the back so they act as one, one big unit um, rather than individual units. So they're tied together with a load of reinforcement and then around the edge then they brush finish up the concrete which you can see shoveling into there now yeah. and, they, um, and that, that's where the fencing will be installed along to prevent people from falling down the stair units. Wow. So yeah, a, bit, lot, a lot of progress really so in this happened. area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diversion wires, we're planning on knocking the wall out, which you can see behind us um, on Monday. We've just got the last, the last kind of bit of concrete to finish up in there. We'll clean everything out, clean everything up inside of here then, and then we'll knock out the wall on Monday, and we should start to see the water permanently diverted through. And that's where it will remain for the duration of the works. Between the, end of the pre, uh, between the end of the concrete pour that you can see there and the gap where we've cut out to allow the temporary diversion to take place, yeah. that's going to be rebuilt with stone. So okay. we've stopped on a load of stone from where we broke out sections of the wall throughout the various phases. We've got a big uh, kind of pile in our, our compound. And once we divert the river, we'll locally just sandbag it off and we'll carry on rebuilding that wall then once, once the river's diverted back through. Brilliant. Through into, into the channel then, um, we've got the two piles that's the last pile cut that's left to be cast on the job now. Um, so once the, divert, once the water's been diverted, there's two piles in there, and there's another two piles. One's roughly under where the, the big water bowser is there, and one's roughly underneath where the tower light is. We break out the wall in between the two, and then we cast a big reinforced uh, slab to support the north pier. Yeah. So similar to what we do with the south pier there, it'll be done exactly the same, and, and it'll be done exactly the same on, onto the north pier. Yeah. You can see over in the distance, we've got the north of Butland, so the steel has been erected for that. We did erect the steel for the north of Butland first and then moved to the south, but we're, we're focusing on building Span A first, just because the, the pier obviously isn't ready or available for this. Yeah, yeah. So next week we'll cast the pier, and then what that will allow us to do is start the false work on Span A between the, uh, the south pier and the south of Butland, you can see behind us. Yeah. And while they're building that, we'll do the pile cap works, and then that will allow us to install Span B then, and then once, while, while, while they're building Span B, we can carry on with the North of Butman to get that concrete in, and then that'll allow Span C. So, it's all coming along very quickly. Remarkably um, quick. I mean, you know, just even looking on the sea breeze camp every day, there's, there's a big change. Yeah, I mean, I'll, we'll probably go around, I'll, I'll take you into the spillway, so you can probably get one of the last videos of, uh, yeah. before we divert it. So the two guys that you can see there with the drilling kit, they're doing the same as, as what they always do with most of the free cash units on the job. They're all doweled into the blocks beneath. So there's four 57 mil dowel bars that go two metres into the block below. Yeah. So they're just coring those, ready to drop the bars and then grout them in position. And that's what will hold them in place. 
Oh, so it's quite a lot larger from this side then from yeah. before. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, to totally different down here. So there's a gap between the two units that you can see there because we're installing what's called an eel ramp. Yeah. The eel ramp is part of the environmental agency condition, so it was part of the flood risk assessment when we did that. The environmental agency asked us to install an eel ramp to allow eel passage up and down the brook. Um, the eel ramp obviously wasn't part of our original design, no. and obviously it takes a, a, a bit of time to get the design developed and then the precast manufactured, and that precast would never have been in here in time for us to be able to install it now. Okay. So once we do divert the brook, the eel ramp will probably arrive probably the first or second week in November, and we'll locally manage the water to one side to drop the units in. Ah, okay, yeah. Cast the, cast the reinforced slab where the guy stood with the staff now. Yeah. Uh, between the units and then divert the water back over the other side to allow us to complete the other uh, the, the, the opposite side to which we're working on. Wow. Let's go down into it. <laughs> so inside of here then, the eel ramp units will sit on, on the top of these precast units. They'll get doweled in and then there's a reinforced slab to cast behind. So everyone's just checking the levels now prior to us diverting the water to make sure that we aren't going to break anything out or cut anything out to allow the precast to go in afterwards, yeah. which you can see they've started doing underneath us here. Yeah. If you're liking this video so far, please hit the subscribe and tick the bell icon so you get to see more videos in the future. <laughs> so we're still in the open spillway now, uh, where the water's going to be flowing back through on Monday. Um, you can see down on the floor the rock pools, which I was talking about earlier from above. As you look up, Underneath the closed culvert which we cast, you can see that the, there's a much wider opening than the front. Yeah. And part of the conditions with the environmental agency and demonstrating the flood modelling process that we have to go through is to ensure that we don't reduce the capacity of the brook. Yeah. We can only increase it. So part of the temporary works and permanent works is proven to the environmental agency and producing what's called a flood risk activity permit to demonstrate that we're not going to increase the risk of flooding upstream. Obviously, there is there is still certain times of the year where yeah. it is still going to like, that flood in, in, in certain storms, and it always has to be. Yeah. There's stuff to be concerned about the geometry and everything on the stream. Yeah. Um, but like I say, we've increased the capacity to allow water to flow out quicker down this end. Yeah, wow. So they, these steps are going to be open to the public all the time, are they? To not the these steps won't be no. There'll be a, there'll be a gate at the top here, right, okay. um, and that'll prevent access. It's purely for maintenance, yeah. really, and just okay. getting down into the elevator. So if you want to come out and have a little look at me up, the guys have, have started to cast the edge plinths down here. That's where the fencing gets bolted onto. Right, okay. A very similar sort of fencing that what we've done on the temporary section down at Coast Guards. Yeah. A big big stainless steel system, big stainless steel base plate to withstand any kind of storms which you potentially still get down here. So the guys are just finishing up now. I think Harry's getting all the nails out of the timber for, for level control. Yeah. So they, they put the nails in the timber to control the level through and then Martin comes behind after. Right. Take, well, Harry's taking the nails out. Martin comes behind after and then starts tarping everything up. So he plastic floats everything first. Then he brush finishes the top of the slab to achieve the finish that you can see here. And then he uh, bulldozed trowels around the edge of it. Behind all of this area will be granite sets, like I mentioned earlier, which is why there's a bit of a rebate there to allow us to okay. put the granite sets in at a later yeah. date. Yeah. Yeah, it's Impressive. Amazing. So it's been a bit of a challenge getting out of this area, really, yeah, and I'm sure. building everything up. We have, we have been flooded out a few times in the very high springs, which I think a few of you, a few of your members have picked up on the cameras. Yeah, um, it's unavoidable, though, isn't it? You yeah, know, yeah. You, it's it's, it's going to happen. But but you know, everyone's done everyone's done really well in getting this built in the environment that we have. have oh, amazing! Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like really impressive. Lads, really. really impressive. They're just carrying out the snagging works underneath the bridge now. So Network Rail came down earlier. They do, a, they do a snag and a walk out. We normally wait till the end of the job to do it. Yeah. But because this section's opening up and the water's going to be flowing back through here, there's no, there's not a great deal of access once you do start diverting it back. So the idea is we snag all of this under here, complete all the works that Network Rail want us to snag. If there's any, if there's anything, you can see like the guy who's filling the smith and our eyes over there. Yeah. Um, and then once 
Never rail are happy that we've snagged everything off, that's when we can divert the water back over. So the final snag walk through is planned for Monday good morning. And then so I'm looking sure Monday, Monday morning, you say? Yeah, I'm sure okay. you'll be around lunchtime getting the, uh, getting the video in for when we break the, the channel through. Absolutely. So to break the channel through, uh, luckily we're going back into neat tides over the weekend now and the tide drops off a little bit so we haven't got the tide to contend with coming up, up, so, up, up okay. the actual uh, the temporary channel. Okay, so you're going to make a, a gap through here for the water to go or is it going to yeah, go out the Yeah, so yeah. there'll be a, a big opening in, in the, bit, the, the bit of a mountain which has been protecting us for, for yeah. the last 12 months. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then upstream, the plan is to drop a three ton excavator in with a 70 ton excavator over the back of the wall. Yeah. Uh, the three ton excavator will go into there, break the, the barrier off that we put in place because that was cast in the concrete. Yeah. Once that's broken out, he'll load up the bucket of the 70 ton excavator and remove the concrete pieces. And then the water will start to flow through. Wow. Once everything's been removed from the base of the channel, then the three ton excavator will be lifted out by the 70 ton and back to normal business. Yeah, so the seal fixes are carrying on, uh, installing the reinforcement for the, the slabs which tie, tie in the units like I discussed earlier. Yeah. Uh, in total down here, there's five slabs, same on the opposite side. And then there's three slabs which run around the perimeter on either side as well. Okay. Once we've installed the perimeter units, so they all get cast together on the tow as well. Thanks again, Jack, for the brilliant tour. There's so much going on at the minute. No worries, you're welcome, mate. Um, Always a pleasure having you down here. As always, if you have any questions to ask or if anybody's got any queries on the work we're doing, um, you're more than welcome to ask them in the, in the comments. Uh, also, Neil's obviously got the, the VIP page on George Street to come. Please visit there if you want to ask any questions to me. Absolutely. Right then. We'll be back here on Monday to watch the Brook Live version. Thanks for watching. <laughs>